In school, we were always taught about at least some of the United States presidents, and how compared to Europe, having an elected non-king was such a revolutionary concept for the time, and how George Washington, America's first president under the Constitution, video on that subject here, rejected becoming a monarchy. However, the US did have an emperor, just a self-proclaimed one, likely rather loony one. In this episode, we'll be looking at America's first emperor, Josh Norton. Before he was the emperor of the United States, Joshua Abraham Norton was just another businessman who ventured to the West to make his fortune. Born in Britain around 1819, he spent his youth in South Africa before migrating to San Francisco during the 1849 gold rush. Norton dove into the real estate business and by the early 1850s had turned his original $40,000 into a quarter million dollar fortune. But like so many gold rush era speculators, Norton's greed eventually got the better of him. China had a severe famine in 1852 and stopped all exports of rice. This caused the rice prices to skyrocket in San Francisco to 30 cents a pound, which is over $9 in modern day. He devised a scheme to conquer the San Francisco market, buying 25,000 pounds of rice from Peru for $750,000. Had things gone to plan, Joshua stood to make a very handsome profit indeed. But the next day, and then over the next two weeks, several more shipments of rice arrived from Peru, all of superior quality to what Norton had bought. The price of rice had plummeted to three cents a pound, with him losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. He spent a year fighting in the courts against the vendor, which only cost him more money and caused him to lose his real estate business. He declared bankruptcy in 1858, after losing it all and drinking a bottle of I don't give a fuck, Norton declared himself emperor over the United States, sending decrees to local newspapers proclaiming himself as such. The San Franciscan Bulletin printed Norton's proclamation as a joke, yet the yokels kind of played to his degree. Norton was very much like the friendly town drunk or homeless individual, as people and businesses took a heavy liking to him and his regular decrees and speeches. Following his declaration as emperor, Norton issued decrees abolishing the US Congress, stating that fraud and corruption prevented the fair representation of the people, which he was kind of correct about, and a few months later issued another decree for the army to overthrow Congress. Neither of these, nor were many of his decrees, given much notice by the army or the US government, especially with the Civil War brewing. Norton spent his days inspecting San Francisco streets in an elaborate blue uniform with gold-plated abulets. He also wore a beaver hat decorated with a peacock feather and a rosette. During his inspections, he would examine the condition of the sidewalks and cable cars, the state of the repair of public property, and the appearance of police officers. He would also frequently give lengthy philosophical expositions on a variety of topics to anyone within earshot. Many businesses would let Norton essentially use their service for free, with them simply requesting that an official endorsement of sorts was granted to the business, as they would heavily improve the attraction of locals to the location. He also issued his own money in the form of scripts, which were accepted from him by restaurants in San Francisco. These notes are rather rare and are very sought after by collectors in modern day. The U.S. Census of 1870 listed Norton's residence as Common Street and his occupation as Emperor, with a side note that he was insane. On January the 8th of 1880, Norton collapsed in front of the old St. Mary's Cathedral while on his way to a lecture, dying almost instantly from a stroke. He died very much poor, with only $6 on his person and limited artifacts at his residence. Initial funeral arrangements were for a coffin of simple redwood. However, the city paid for the rosewood casket and arranged a dignified farewell, with over 10,000 citizens attending. He was buried in the Masonic Cemetery, again at the expense of the city. I hope you enjoyed a brief look into one of the more quirky aspects that have happened throughout history. If you have a topic that you would like me to cover in a future video, say so down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.